Today is Saturday 19 of uh, August 2016. As you can see, this uh, 14 year old nature schnauzer, the swelling under the neck has definitely gone down considerably. Now, yesterday I made uh, about 2 cm cut to drain out the pass, and uh, overnight, much has come out. And as you can see, there's no more swelling and pain. See that, that yesterday we pressed the dog for cyanotic. And even at the x ray, uh, the vet assistant was saying they're going to die, going to die, mm, going to die soon because of this panting. And actually, the main problem was the teeth were not uh, scaled, not, not clean up. And uh, the, the bacteria went through the lower mandible, the lower mandible, which then goes under the neck. And uh, that is one of the ways bacteria from rotten teeth has gone under. And uh, my assistant did do a syringe to check the swelling and it was full of reddish brown pus, thick ones. Then uh, today we, after antibiotics and IV drip, I see that the pus is more jelly and less smelly. Now this is the cut which is necessary, although it looks terrible. But uh, if you do a small cut, let's say one third of this, then uh, it can't drain out the pus. Now we turn over the other side. As you can see, the other side, we turn over the other side. And you can compare to the X-ray. And compare to the X-ray. And uh, you look at the X-ray, the swelling here was really, really, uh, let me just come this side. The swelling here was really obvious on the X-ray. And uh, in fact, the owner complained that there's a big swelling here below, a big swelling. And from the X-ray, you can see that the abscess, the pus has gone upwards here. Have a look at the X-ray afterwards. And, uh, and so, so that said the dog couldn't breathe properly because the whole throat is swollen, surrounded by pus. And uh, the tongue was cyanotic yesterday and the blood test shows white cells count was above three, four times normal. And uh, now you can see the dog is not really panting. I extracted the upper teeth and the other, the other tooth are extracted. But this one is okay, this lower one. And uh, so now there are two causes of neck abscesses. One of course is the ear, which we checked both years. There was no uh, pass or, or infection. So in this case, most likely the infection will have come from the the decayed roots of the the molars. It goes down, and then bacteria spread and uh, go around the neck, causing pain. Now, the 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 initial diagnosis would be take a syringe and aspirate, which which my assistant did and found that it was reddish brown pus. And so the next step would be to incise. It looks terrible but you are healed by granulation. And now you can see this dog is really at peace. It's not like panting or, or getting crying for due to pain. So this is day two. Doesn't uh, it should it should be much better. We are giving a drip again later at antibiotics and I expect the dog to recover. I mean, uh, for these type of cases, there's no need for euthanasia because it is a curable disease. Now, these are about the second or third case of abscesses I get from old dogs. And these abscesses are, are under the neck. And the presenting sign is actually difficulty in breathing, panting, and uh, of course not eating. Now this dog has below normal temperature because the glucose level was much below normal. Now so, as you can see, the gums are much pinker and the dog is no, not so dehydrated. But the main thing is that uh, the blood test shows total white cell counts and neutrophils reaching to very high levels, total white shell count is about 40, 
which are normal is up to 17, and nutrient fuse was 90%, with the absolute being very high. So that, that uh, blood test is important to confirm that this dog had the bacteremia, uh, and the source will be here from the abscess. Now, x-ray is needed, x-ray is needed because of the need to differentiate between abscess or, or cancer tumor but now you know it's due to due to uh, infection now I go and look at the x-ray on the other room x-ray the other room hello you look at the x-ray the other room which I'm doing the case now now they come to this x-ray here Okay, now let me update this block. Let me just get the the block out now. Yeah. Okay, a 14 year old miniature sponsor has a large neck abscess. Okay, under this block. You saw the snouter just now. So let's view the x ray now. Okay, now you can see the X-ray for the old female spade nozzle. You can see the swelling and the pain around the neck, neck area. There's a big swelling. There's, there's a main complaint by the owner, and uh, the dog was really gasping for breath, like it was going to die any time. Tongue was suddenly thick purplish and uh, all the viewers, onlookers were very worried that it was going to die any time. So you can see that uh, this is the abscess uh, which actually is extended up to here, the whole, whole area. This is the windpipe. So when you aspirate with a syringe and needle 18G, my assistant will find that reddish yellow pus came out so a syringe will not be any use so we need to we need to uh, we need to make an incision now the dorsal ventral view is useless you can't see anything okay you can't see because abscess is is uh, on the neck area but I just want to check whether there's any tumours or not but uh, nothing so far and uh, then we go to the next view uh, I go back to the next view now as you can see, just based on this original x-ray, you can see that uh, the pass is here actually there, causing difficulty in reading first. This is the throat and uh, the dog also can't eat, so that's why the glucose level was below normal. You can see that uh, the teeth, uh, they could be spreading the bacteria in because the roots are exposed and uh, bacteria travels in under the neck, spread. The bacteria multiplies, causing pus formation and painful throat, a very painful throat eating and drinking is difficult. So. Today, as you can see, the dog definitely is, is uh, not uh, panting and uh, you can see the dog is almost uh, normal. Now we look at the blood test results. Well, the blood test results taken at the time of admission. You see the blood test and uh, you can see this one, 90% neutrophils. Absolute number is very high. 
total by cell is 39 and the normal is only up to 17 and uh, this is an indicative of bacteremia total by cell count and high neutrophils 90 percent definitely this is bacteremia and uh, neutrophils is normally about 60 to 70 percent and the absolute number the absolute number for neutrophils normal dogs neutrophils should be 3 to 11.5 so the absolute number should be this one the normal should be 60 to 70 percent the normal dog we can see is 90 percent so it's a it's a very bad infection and you see the absolute number is nearly 40 36 36 it's nearly 36 when the normal one normal absolute numbers in a normal dog not sick is 3 to 11.5 3 to 11.5 you can see it's definitely a lot now the interesting thing was that this dog was hypothermic the, the glucose level was low probably not eating for a few days you can see you can see the glucose is um, 2.6 normal should be 3.9 to, to 6.0 so this could be one reason that uh, the dog was not able to stand up and you see the liver the enzymes are up as well this is probably due to infection as well enzymes are up the urea is up but the creatinine level is, is normal creatinine level creatinine level is normal now urea is up creatinine level is normal is normal urea is up but at least there is no kidney kidney disease liver yes liver disorder the liver and uh, overall you can see that uh, going back to the blood area hematology you can see that surprisingly the platelets are normal so there is no uh, septicemia you see the platelets are within the normal range 200 to 500 which is surprising to me and even hematocrit also is is at uh, within the normal range so the red cell count is normal red cell count is normal and uh, normal red cell count and hemoglobin is normal so so this is surprising that uh, both are normal so the whole the, 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 the proper explanation is that the dog has just got this infection quite recently last two days and uh, it's a very bad bacterial infection but no toxicity yet and uh, with treatment here with betrayal and antibiotics drips the dog appears to be on the way to recovery so the diagnosis is submandibular or neck abscesses due to bacterial infection has a source the source of the bacteria will be likely the rotten teeth the roots of the lower molars had uh, been exposed and over time bacteria had gone in into the the neck tissues and multiply this being an old dog the immune system is still quite good to fight off the bacteria but the swelling the swollen abscess has to be drained otherwise 
the dog would die from suffocation. Uh, a big incision has been cut, as you can see in the earlier part of the video, and uh, the dog is expected to recover. Rotten teeth have been has been extracted. Now, in such cases, obviously you cannot use gas anesthesia because the teeth are actually loose. So we just extract the loose teeth, especially the molars, and uh, in this way, the dog does not die of under the anesthesia, which is very bad. Now, this dog is surprisingly has no serious heart murmurs, and so the, uh, the pneumonia and the liver disease might be cured by uh, antibiotics and uh, multivitamins and painkillers taught by your vets August 19 to 16 day 2 review of a 14 year old miniature schnauzer female speed with a big neck swelling and difficulty in breathing and eating, swallowing